my total tea increased from 598 nanograms per deciliter to 958, and free tea went from 16 nanograms per deciliter to 24.2. There are thousands of supplement options out there, and in this video, I'm gonna go over what I take to optimize my fitness, health, and hormones. All my claims will have scientific backing with sources listed at the bottom. Examine.com is one site that I use in particular that has trained physicians and researchers compiling peer-reviewed academic papers on supplements in order to track their research benefits. All supplements I talk about in this video are 100% natural, all available over the counter without prescription, and none of them are banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency as I'm making this video. I have gotten immense benefits from this protocol, but you should do your own research and consult your own doctor to figure out what's right for you. Affiliate links are below if you're interested in any of these products. On supplements as a whole, my philosophy here is that they're preventive in nature. You might not see their effects in the near term, but they're really here for the long-term health benefits and as a built-in redundancy to ensure that you meet your nutrition requirements. Some people say that you can naturally get all the supplements that you need through food. Well, these people would be wrong. Aside from some essential vitamins and minerals, you can definitely not consume enough food to reach efficacious doses of some of these supplements. You're not going to, for creatine and chondroitin, start eating 10 pounds of tuna a day or start adding shark cartilage to your diet in order to get effective doses. With that, let's begin because there are a lot of pills to swallow in this list. Starting with food supplements that I add to my diet. Number one is protein powder. Eating enough protein is essential to muscle production, and you will want to have about one gram of protein per pound of body weight that you currently are. On top of that, protein is the most satiating out of carbs, fats, and proteins, so it will help you eat less if your goal is to control your calorie intake. Finally, it can strengthen bones and mineral density. Next is collagen which is a protein that I also take in powder form. Collagen is the most abundant protein in your body and is essential for building cartilage in your joints and skin cells. Because of this, I take it to protect my joints and improve my face's skin texture. Fiber is the last food supplement that I take, specifically in the form of psyllium husk powder. The brand I take is Metavusil, which comes in a drinkable orange flavor. Fiber is immensely important for your gut health, ensuring your gut bacteria stays healthy. It normalizes and makes it easy the times that you need to poop so you never feel constipated and can go make the rest of your day unhindered by bathroom worries. Next for the supplements I take for general health. Number one is just a multivitamin. This is just a catch-all insurance policy. It's cheap and easy to take and covers a wide range of nutritional requirements, so it's just a no-brainer. Just be aware that not all multivitamins are the same. And even if the daily values provided are the same on the label, different brands might use different forms and ingredients that have different rates of bioavailability for your body. In addition to a multivitamin, I take an extra supplementation of the whole vitamin B complex, which I added after doing a full blood panel and feeling like it could help my red blood cell biomarkers. There are many variations of the B vitamins, but as a family, they have crucial roles in metabolism, brain health, DNA repair, and red blood cell production. Vitamin B7 is also a common supplement for healthier hair, nails, and skin. Vitamin D I supplement separately as well, after testing my vitamin D blood serum concentrations and noticing that it was low. Vitamin D is something that around 40% of Americans have a deficiency in, so it's important to supplement. Vitamin D strengthens the immune system and reduces inflammation, which helps with muscle and joint recovery from the gym. It is also essential for helping our bones absorb calcium and phosphorus that it needs. Next is omega-3 fatty acids, most commonly supplemented through fish oil. Omega-3s have a long research trail of having amazing health and longevity benefits, including supporting heart health, brain health, and being anti-inflammatory. Moving on to some of the lesser recognized but still extremely important minerals, there's magnesium. Magnesium is a larger mineral, so it's harder to fit in adequate amounts of many multivitamins, which is why I supplement it separately. Magnesium supports heart health, sleep quality, and adequate levels are a requirement for testosterone production. Zinc is another essential mineral that plays a crucial role for testosterone production. In addition to that, zinc is an immune system booster and is essential for the creation of new cells when repairing damaged skin. Finally, there is CoQ10, which also comes in the more bioavailable form, ubiquinol. CoQ10 is a powerful antioxidant that is naturally produced by the body, but which declines as you age. Its main application is to support your heart health as you age, but also can have a role in lowering blood pressure. The next class of supplements I specifically take for their immense antioxidant and anti-inflammatory capabilities. In the short run, these anti-inflammatories aid with muscle recovery after workouts and in the long run, powerful antioxidants and anti-inflammatories help protect the joints and ward off cancer development. The first supplement is curcumin, which is naturally found in foods like ginger and turmeric. Curcumin is a powerful antioxidant that reduces inflammation in joints and muscles and can help alleviate inflammatory diseases. Next is N-acetylcysteine, 
or NAC, which helps produce glutathione, the most powerful antioxidant produced in the body. NAC can improve lung function, and its antioxidant capabilities can especially help protect your liver. Finally is chondroitin glucosamine, which are actually two different supplements with anti-inflammatory properties that are commonly sold together. Its primary applications for the support of healthy joints as it reduces soreness, pain, and stiffness, and slows the breakdown of collagen in your knees and joints. Next is my regimen for fitness optimization and to get my best performance in the gym. First is creatine at 5 grams per day. Creatine is one of the longest studied performance enhancing ingredients out there and is known to boost strength and power and build muscle mass. On top of that, it also has cognitive benefits. A lot of people are aware of the hair loss myth associated with creatine and are afraid to take because of this. My opinion is that the hair loss is a load of BS. It was from a singular study with a sample size of only 20 rugby players in a short time span and the results have never been replicated since, even though many researchers have tried. There just isn't any other evidence for the supposed hair loss, whereas the muscle building effects are well understood with a rich research history. Beta alanine is the next performance enhancing supplement I take, mainly for its endurance building effects. It helps buffer lactic acid, which delays muscle fatigue and can have up to a 3% increase in exercise performance outcomes. Next is L-citrulline, which is a non-essential amino acid that comes in small amounts from sources like watermelon, but more realistically from most pre-workouts in the form of citrulline malate. L-citrulline boosts the production of nitric oxide, which enhances blood flow to the muscles, allowing them to get more oxygen and you to get more pumps in the gym. NMN is next, which stands for nicotinamide mononucleotide. Supplementation with NR or nicotinamide riboside can get you similar results. NMN is a precursor for the production of NAD+, which declines as we age and is involved in many bodily processes. Because of this, supplementing with NMN can have anti-aging effects and in the context of sports performance, can boost your VO2 max levels and your ability to uptake more oxygen. NMN is still relatively new from the research perspective, but the data here is promising as it's based on multiple human studies that were double-blind placebo-controlled experiments with statistical significance. The only downside right now is that these supplements are relatively expensive, and like many supplements on this list can have limited bioavailability. Next is choline which is a precursor of acetylcholine, a neuromodulator involved in memory, attention, and muscle contraction. Choline is naturally gotten from many foods, with eggs, beef liver, and red meat being especially great sources of it. Nevertheless, you might want to supplement more since acetylcholine can boost focus and learning, which leads to increased performance inside and outside the gym. Alpha-GPC is the most potent non-food source of choline supplementation. However, there have been many recent concerns with alpha-GPC and any low bioavailability choline source that supplementation could increase the levels of TM TMAO that your gut bacteria produces, and TMAO is in turn a risk factor for stroke. This problem was brought up by Dr. Andrew Huberman, who is a professor of neurobiology at Stanford Medical School, on his Huberman Lab podcast, and his solution for alpha-GPC and choline supplementation was to include 600 milligrams of allicin supplementation from garlic. In his own blood measurement trials, he stated that allicin can offset the increased TMAO levels and reduce the stroke risk factor, which is why I also supplement garlic. Lastly is ectosteroids. Despite the name, these compounds are not steroids in any way in humans and have no androgenic effects. I include these last because the evidence for their effectiveness is very limited right now, but they are thought to increase muscle mass. At the minimum, they appear to have limited and no downsides aside from burning a hole in your wallet and may have other side benefits such as lowering cholesterol and blood glucose. I take them just in case for the potential that they do work and because there doesn't seem to be a biologic downside. Finally, we come to testosterone boosters. The big question is of course, do testosterone boosters even work? For me, unequivocally yes. My total T increased from 598 nanograms per deciliter to 958, and free T went from 16 nanograms per deciliter to 24.2. These results were about 1.5 years apart. I will say many other factors in my life changed in addition to adding testosterone boosters for about 5 months but as a before and after snapshot, the results are absolutely amazing. As a disclaimer, all of the supplements I list here are 100% natural and are not considered performance enhancing drugs and are not banned in the sports context and will not negatively affect your own natural hormone production or come with other severe androgenic effects. I've experienced no negative side effects and don't expect to, but otherwise do your own research. If you're a woman watching this, I don't see a reason why any of these supplements wouldn't be fine to take, but most likely you won't experience the same degree of testosterone boosting effects. First is ashwagandha which has perhaps the longest history of study of the ingredients in this list. Ashwagandha is a shrub that reduces stress and anxiety by lowering cortisol levels, improving sleep, and potentially raising testosterone. Next is boron, which is actually a trace mineral that increases your free testosterone available to the body by reducing sex hormone binding globulin, which captures and binds the tea that is floating around. Next are the two that Andrew Huberman made famous, 
Tomcat Ellie, and Fadoja Agrestis. For Tomcat Ellie, there isn't much to say other than it can boost testosterone by as much as 200 to 400 nanograms per deciliter. Fadoja Agrestis is also paired with Tomcat Ellie in this context and can boost testosterone by increasing your luteinizing hormone, which signals the testes to produce more testosterone. But critically, the safety of Fadoja Agrestis hasn't been established and many experts recommend cycling on and off to be safe. Potentially three to four weeks on, one week off, or eight weeks on, two weeks off, so take caution here. Finally, I've also been taking Sustanch, which is one of those traditional Chinese medicines that are claimed to have all these aphrodisiac effects. Mainly, we're interested here in its potential for boosting T levels, as well as its other side benefits. So that's it for my supplementation protocol. With enough pills here to scare your friends and family into thinking you have some sort of addiction or serious disease. However, I hope that you gain something of value from the scientific-based evidence and facts that I have provided here in order to make your own informed and educated decisions about your own supplementation protocol. If you want to see how these supplements actually impacted my fitness, take a look at some of my other videos that I have and give me a subscribe below.